Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the last round of the Swiss portion of the December 1v1, or sorry, February 1v1 tournament. February 2018 1v1 tournament. Our time goes by. Yes. And we have its final match, Sigeto and Anir on Desert Needle Small. And Sigeto going for Cloaky right off the bat. Anir, probably going to go for Cloaky. Maybe go for Rovers. Probably Cloaky. Yeah, we cannot tell the one here that we're ready. Anyway, it's again. Um, well, Hoko, just if you're if you're in the game, just say you're ready. I cannot because it's uh, muting specs. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, well I'll. Oh yeah, it's just okay. Here, they're starting. Everything is good. Cool. Uh, they got it. No worries at all. So, Anir is going for rovers. How about that? Very nice. In this yeah. map. I really like when people try to expand naked into one of the corners, just like being <laughs> very brave about it and hoping that a player doesn't find. But even though it's not that much metal, it's like brave play. <laughs> it is. And it's actually not bad. Six metal per second is not nothing. I mean, compared to the rest of the map, I, I realize the rest of the map, that sort of thing is just readily available. You have 20 metal, no, 30 metal. That's like right there in your main base area. So I get it's not huge, so much. but still. It's one of the maps that probably Google Frog will uh, call super speed metal because just so much metal around, so much. Um, but then again, almost none of it is like, okay, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but a lot of the metal is not easily defendable. There's hmm. so many paths, so many places to flank. Even the base is so big that it's not easily defendable. It is defendable. But there are a lot of so much paths. And remember that the enemy has so many units because they have so much metal. So they can just send 20 glaives. Yep. What do you do against 20 glaives? <laughs> you put the stardust, but then you don't expand. And then where do you put the stardust? You don't. You need two or three stardust. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you, the only option is to make your own 20 glaives. Well, Raid two... them before they raid you. Well, it looks like that's exactly what Sigeto was doing. Getting rid of one fencer, not a bad shot, but the mason's still safe. That's the important thing. The masons have not been taken out yet, so Nier hasn't lost too much, but Sigeto's expanding way faster. Like, already 5 metal per second lead, and I think they have an extra constructor just going. Mostly because this one's idle. Oh, and look at this. The are already going in with the glaives. They know what they're doing. They've got the glaives already in place just to make sure that Anir doesn't do anything fancy. Just to make sure they'll stop any masons from going there. Or at least... Or not. Or they're going for the assault. Either way. What, what is Anir doing? I think... I don't know. This is not... Why? That is really weird. Because, yeah, Anir's... Actually, I'm not sure what Sigeto's doing either, because Sigeto had a good position. The ping is rather high. Oh, yeah. One... Yeesh, yeah, might be disconnecting, actually. 800 milliseconds. Sheesh, that doesn't make any sense either. <laughs> Look. Well, I usually play with, like, 300, 400, so... Yeah, it, exactly. It does happen, but... But... Uh, they're going into this second uh, all, all the time so it is not nice um Eesh. i mean i normally yeah, i mean 400 is pretty typical it's thankfully it's not a huge deal but yeah three or 400 is i think it's typical for everybody yeah it's entirely playable with 400. Hmm, but at this point it looks like anir still managing to get a decent enough position i mean the scorchers are managing to get some some room but Sigaro has expanded so much in the meantime, whereas Anir, they have they have a couple of caretakers set up. They have some stuff set up for when they get an economy, but they don't have the economy yet. They're slowly but surely building it up. While, on the other hand, Sigaro is, is stalling a lot, yeah. That's true. They are accessing. They are accessing, they're stalling, everything is... Um, but the, the <laughs> they, they have what to access from, which is always better than the alternative. 
Exactly. They have so much metal that, sure, they're accessing, but they're able to rebuild the energy, like, inside of, what was it, three, three, uh, 30 seconds at most, maybe? They've rebuilt enough energy that they have more than enough to deal with the metal problem. And they got the characters yeah. built up. So now everything's and just going their way. Have, and now we have wind. The wind just improved, and suddenly, Sigara doesn't ex um, install anymore. Yes, that too. So, on top of that, and the caretakers and everything else, Sigara's fine. They're they're actually doing just fine. They got the care they get the caretaker critical mass going. And on the other hand, Anir has one caretaker, and is still accessing. So Sigara, man, this is where you get the twenty glaives. I, I think we already have them actually. Now, ah, 14. Okay, six more. This is... It will happen. Yeah, this we is going to be tough. We will have the glaives. <laughs> this has already been tough. From now on, it's... And and see how Sigera is sending the glaives to check for the corner. Yeah. Which is the thing we oh, were no, talking about they, earlier. They don't, they don't. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? No, hang on. They... No, they just moved. Earlier, they did send them. I was wrong. But Maybe still, they know. it was a misclick or something. They should know reasonably yeah. well that there's nothing there. Anir has not built up there. I know they are, no, they are checking. Okay, good. We want to make sure that they have scouted things out so they know for sure that Anir has not built up. So that both they can build up if they'd like to, and they don't have to worry about this weird backdoor expansion that's going to be a problem for them. So Let's overall, Sigero... Here we have eight glaives, which is not exactly... Not enough. It'll deal some damage. Might get rid of the mason, but the lotuses are doing a fine job. Lotuses and the fence are doing a fine enough job making their lives miserable. But hey, three metal extractors for eight glaives. Not the best trade, especially with all the reclaim. I can kind of see why Sigero went for it. But, I mean, Sigero's still ahead economically, so it's not a huge loss. That that's kind of the point when you're so much ahead. It's not a matter of killing the enemy as much as keeping them occupied and not letting them have the initiative. The initiative is the, so important. Whether you respond to things or you make the enemy respond. And that's what Sigero's done. Forcing the response of a nearest commander being forced out of position onto the hill and unable to do anything leaving the entire center of the map open to Sigero, which, I mean, let's be honest, they've pretty much had this entire game, but now they have for sure. And now that they've gotten rid of all the Scorchers protecting this southern exp or this eastern expansion, well, it's done. It's gone. These metal extractors are gone, the ones at the top are gone. Yeah, that one attack may not have been huge, but the combination of attacks and the combination of pressure is just putting a near so farther and farther behind. Or rather, it's keeping them stable while Sigero is continuously expanding. On. Uh. I'm not sure what Anir can really do. I like that they've managed to use most of their metal, but they have no energy left. Nope, nothing to do. Really. <laughs> this is Is it towel time? Decided. It has been for a while. Fair it's enough. It's just a matter of, of convincing them. Well, unless, you know, something catastrophic will happen. But... I don't what know, nights are coming Miracles, up. Miracles, usually... It's, it's some... You know how miracles don't, don't they, they usually happen to whoever is leading <laughs> or yeah. whoever was the favorite. So with Sigara being such a good player, I, I don't see miracles really happening. And we have 20 glaives? No, less glaive, less and less. Yeah, and a bunch less. of them died. They, we, there were more than 20 at the start, but a bunch of them did fall to the fencers. Only 11 left, but that's still more than enough to take out this entire expansion. If the Lotuses get microed and targeted, then, yeah, it's fine. Actually, not even being tar- microed. The Glaive's just- this is- this is just AI. Sigero doesn't even care. Just going in move. Just full on attack move. Let the Glaives decide. No need to focus on stuff when it's already the economy which decides the game. Yeah, I mean, that's okay, one Scorcher. One Scorcher managing to do the job, but then at the same time, Reaver coming in the back. So, Anir, yeah, this is. I mean, at the very least, Sigato has some really nice o overdrive chains. Just keeping everything kind of aesthetically pleasing. Well, nice They're at the moment. 
Everybody's accessing. Yeah, but accessing at 90 metal per second compared to accessing at 30 metal per second? Like, yeah, you could use twice as many caretakers yeah. or another three or four factories. But And here is yeah. Air Factory being started. Oh, there you go. Um, That's the excess taken care of. <laughs> and oh, a bunch of Zeus's. We haven't seen oh. that many Zeus's today, have we? No, not at all. I haven't seen a single knight. They are... Oh, knight, good, sorry. But... Yeah, they got, they got renamed. Yeah. But they are good. <laughs> it's just they're expensive. And considering yeah. that the mass we've been playing on have either been settled inside of a few minutes or have been large enough, have been the, just the size that you don't really get past glaives. That you don't have enough... It's They're wider than they have economies to, to support it. Like, this map is big, but is also mass... is also dense in economy. So you can get the knights. You can get... How many knights are there? 20 knights! Hey! 23 knights! That's more than enough. 20 is like... This... This, this is a good number. <laughs> that's your number now. I mean, that's, that's just the number you threw out there, so yeah. it's, that's the one. That's the one. Although they're split up pretty well. and We got eight up front, just taking care of everything. Main, maintaining contains. And then a bunch in back. No. Dominatrix is coming from a near trying to Ooh. stall Sigero a little tiny bit. I don't know if a near is even aware of what's going on. I like, don't they probably, if they were they'd throw in the towel. Because they're th they yeah. have a threefold economic disadvantage and that is an that is a guaranteed win. Unless they somehow magically found a way of getting their economy back up, maintaining that for another ten minutes. Like if they got all the metal extractors that are currently un unclaimed, held those for 10 minutes, they'd have a chance. <laughs> I'd argue that not even then. M maybe with a crow in Sigurus base, but... but. <laughs> it's, oh, I it's, don't know. It's three times or four times the, the, the income is way, way too much. I mean, but, it would be kind of funny to see the crow, or if if Sigeta went for a crow and then he had five or six dominatrices, just capture it and send it back. That'd be amusing. Wouldn't do the trick, though. There's too much of an army on the field. But it'd be amusing. Definitely amusing. I'm, I'm for amusing games. It just, it's, um, I suspect that people don't resign because um, it, it's, it's things to do with being in the flow. Oh, and he's just saying in chat that he knows. He knows he <laughs> loosed. Loosed, which is probably something. Uh, no, it's not. He just misspelled <laughs> lost. But yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I just like to pronounce things as they're spelled sometimes. Well. When I'm feeling cheeky. Like right now. Yeah, but... Uh... English is really, really complicated. Well, why it the is. hell is it? It's stupidly complicated. And, lost and and it doesn't make sense. Just doesn't make sense. So like and and loose versus lose and all this stuff. Anyway, we, we <laughs> have just seen how someone loosed. <laughs> yep, they they lose it well, but they loosed. <laughs> Definitely. So at this point, I... Oh, is that the only one done? Okay, so Scipio apparently just surrendered right off... The, like, they forfeited right off the bat. So, nothing there. Froggy and King Kingstad? Oh, that'd be good. Sure. Then I'm joining. And that's been going on for 10 minutes. Okay. So he didn't miss much, anyway. Although, admittedly, this is going to be a bit hard to catch up on because there's going to be so many units on the field. <laughs> right. Um, I'm, I think I'm rejoining a bit faster because I have lower graphics settings, which, you know, because I can. Um, because I can. Because I, I'm not casting. <laughs> yep. I mean, you know, it's the thing. I do like to make things fancy. Uh, it's, it's important. Being fancy is very important when someone looks, but... Um, I think I mostly play Dot Wars. Um, <laughs> I'm ah. so zoomed out. And, and this is 
how I usually like to play. I'm surprised you're playing 0K then, because that's a very micro-oriented game <laughs> relative to a lot of TA clones, but or TA-based games. But at Ooh, this point, I... I mean, this is not one of those games. The macro is currently winning with Google Frog at a slight advantage, but it's enough. You'll the scores to Cannon possibly really wreck up Kingstat's back line. Very definitely get rid of a bunch of the hammers, possibly get around and take care of the economy as well. But not not going for it yet. Now going for it. Okay, so eight minute mark. Kingstead losing a massive chunk of their economy, and Google Frog. Oh, as ahead as they are, Kingstead might still have a chance. Those Scorchers didn't manage to deal with as much as they could have. And at the same time, Kingstead able to get rid of fair amount of the economy in the back line for Google Frog as well, so still keeping it even. Mexes are dying, and Kingstead is not falling apart yet, but at the same time, Google Frog already with the Ravens, so. That's damage onto the commander. That's damage onto the factor. That's actually damage onto. Oh, a fusion plant. That's what went down. So Kingstead, after losing that, is basically stuck. Well, they're stuck in actually a really bad position with Google Frog taking most of the map and Kingstad throwing in the towel right as we get back in here. Because of course they did. <laughs> who, who but at least managed, yes. we saw a game that was a bit more bit had a bit more of an economy focus to it. And at this point, it looks like that is going to be largely... Catastrophe yeah, like, versus 400. Mm -hmm. That's probably over by now. Uh, it's still going on, but um, I'm rejoining just to Oops. see what's going on. I mean, I guess I might as well then, too. Let's see. We'll see. In 14 minutes, that's not huge. We can get back into that. Yes. Although, admittedly, on this map, that's still a long time, potentially. I'm already at the 7 minutes mark. It's not that bad. And I think right. it's not going to be over that soon. Okay. Let's get something a little less one-sided then. And... Okay, so 400 managing to... Okay, both players going for... Oh, no, Kluge versus Rover, as before. But it looks like, yeah, Catastrophe managing to get a fair bit of mileage in there, but accessing a fair bit in their own right. But hey, both players managing to expand. And expanding quite quickly, and not losing much. Defending their expansions! Hey, getting that old choke point setup going. Amazing. You know, one factory we haven't seen yet is jump bots. And one factory I've seen work remarkably well in this map in the early game is jump bots. So I'm wondering if we're going to see that really? for pyros. Yeah, you've used the pyros along the sides, where the like where the edge, uh, and then you just go from there. I see. Yeah, it actually I works see. really well. Or it can. I mean, it's obviously you have the downside of using jump bots on a map that requires speed and requires the mobility, but... It's kind of a nice little cheese strat. I've seen it happen a few times. Not recently, mind you. No one plays this map recently. But at this point, it looks like Catastrophe managing to hold on decently well. 400 does have the economic advantage, but Catastrophe only about half behind and managing to hold the line with boatloads of fencers, making sure that even all these harpies, for all their numbers, cannot get in. So Catastrophe getting a decent amount of attrition off that, still behind by a thousand metal, and of course their economy is still behind a fair bit. But it's not falling apart completely. If this expansion over here gets taken off to the east, we could see Catastrophe at least start to rebuild and start to get some position back in this map. It's tricky, though, with all the Air Force. The sheer number of Harpies and Tridents coming in here from 400. But Catastrophe isn't that far off in terms of overall money available. And they have actually managed to clear out the expansion, and they are getting a slight economic advantage. They just need to hold it for a few minutes. And you are right, this is not going to anytime soon. Well, the crashes coming in here, stopping the Harpies from being able to do much over to the north side of the map means that there's an opening over to the south side as the Harpies are not in position to stop the ground forces from Catastrophe from getting into 400's base and getting a lot of damage done. Potentially taking but out some of the Harpies, nice. but... Yeah. But something nice is that air units are highly maneuverable, so the Harpies can get where they're needed if given enough time. True, but they are also fighting against a lot of crashes and a lot of fencers. And that could still be their doom. The only downside, of course, being that all the Ravagers died to a bunch of Blast Wings, meaning there's not much left to stop the Glaives from getting in here 
fending off the attack and leaving 400 in a decent enough spot. They still had their economy. They still have a, quite a bit of reclaim and a decent amount of overdrive. And they got the southeast in the process. Actually, they both northwest and southeast. So even with Catastrophe's expansions, 400 still has a significant advantage economically. Actually, overall... Yeah, 400 has a 12k metal advantage. Oh, but only a 6k metal used advantage. 400, 400 accessed a fair bit more. And it looks like... Yeah, that's about it. Really. Okay, so there's actually a reasonably close game here. Other than, you know, 6k of unit value different difference. <laughs> yeah, but... It's not only the size of your army, it's how you use it. And what it's made of. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, considering that a lot of it is harpies... Like, ooh, 2,700 of that is harpies, which are useless in this fight. That's actually a very fair point. Uh, so, yeah, really, if these harpies go down, that's a lot of attrition in Catastrophe's favor. The crash is not going to go down in the process. The Ravagers are doing a fine job protecting them. So, Harpy is going down with very little value in the process, and that gives Catastrophe the opening to take out the Southeast. If the Southeast goes, which it could very well go, if an Assault Force manages to breach it, at least, then there is the opportunity, potentially, to completely lock off that side of the map and give Catastrophe half the map. Hmm. Of course, the question is, how do they hold the line long enough to do that? Ah, there's the answer. Rippers up front, Ravagers in the back. Ravagers will be able to take care of this, no problem. The Rippers can stop the Glaze from getting in. So this is an opportunity. This is a pretty good opportunity, in fact, having destroyed that Stardust. And nothing in the back to defend it? Well, some Lotuses, but that's not much. Catastrophe's got a chance. Yeah, it does seem the Catastrophe is making use of what they have F even good use oh the crash is going forward crashers. oh boy uh, a few of them are going to go down oh but no the rippers okay this was less bad than expected then it could have been at least yeah at the same time though i would like to see catastrophe send a handful of raptors back to take care of this expansion just to destroy and some of catastrophe's economy Check sorry destroy some we have done that. Yeah, that's where the economy kind of needed to be destroyed, is that Catastrophe doesn't have an answer to that. They have Ravagers, which aren't bad, but they haven't got much else. Like, that's all they have is Ravagers and a bunch of crashes now that the Air Force is gone and is not being rebuilt that much. 400 does have some air construction, but it's nowhere near the priorities. The ground construction, nowhere near the priority of the Dante. There's not much stopping it, except Stag Defense, was, which was already in place and is actually doing a lot of damage to it. I mean, really, the Masons are the only thing that's going to be holding the line, but that's really all that's holding the line. The counterattack, however, coming in at this point, 400, kind of exposing that most of their army value is up in that northern Dante. And that's still only a 6k difference, which is roughly the cost of a Dante. Well, 3500 the cost of a Dante. Somehow, somehow, Catastrophe has gotten a bit in. Well, yeah, because most of the army, most of what of 400 economic and military investment, that's in that Dante. He needs to, needs to get the crashers in place. Well, that's exactly what's happening, and with those crashers in place, that means that the Harpies won't have much room to maneuver. The Tridents won't be able to do much, and that would actually open things up if Catastrophe wants to send in these Ravens, which they have plenty. Once they get rid of those Tridents, those Ravens can just go wherever they like. They get rid of the Dante, which actually they're very well equipped to do, and are in fact doing right now. And then it can go from there to getting rid of a bunch of the base. Catastrophe has actually opened this up despite their economic disadvantage this entire game. Clever use of unit typing has given them an opportunity to win this. Although, assuming they actually hit the... Wow! Hit the Dante. That Dante! <laughs> okay, well, that sucks for everything but the Dante. It's much for the opportunity. I mean, that would have been death if the Dante wasn't moving. I'm a bit surprised that the, the Ravens didn't correct for that. But... As it stands, 400, they still have a strong economy. They can still rebuild from this quite effectively. The caretakers are the one thing that's really keeping them alive, and that is not what Catastrophe is targeting. 
I'd love to see them target that, but they aren't. And this Dante is not going down because, like, really, this needs to be aim. Like, it needs to be manually aimed in front of the Dante, clearly. No, something is weird. Ah, <sighs> that sucks. It, it used to be, like, Ravens are normally really good about targeting moving units like that. I don't know what happened to the targeting algorithms, but they that, I think, is been, the reason Catastrophe yeah. lost the game. Like, Catastrophe what, likely wouldn't have thrown have in the towel. Dived. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't dive. Very weird. Yeah, although on the other hand, there was another Dante in the main base. But even then, that's something that there was enough Ravens to take care of both. Anarchy says, and uh, they're correct, that the Thunderbirds looked wrong. Thunderbirds are much more effective. Oh, than that too, yes. That... Put a stop gap. Yeah, because yeah, the Thunderbird in there, that disarms them. And then at the very least, you can send in ground forces or whatever else. Just and then delay. it works. Not to mention, Thunderbird in the main base. One Thunderbird going across the main base would have opened up everything wow. for Catastrophe's ground forces to rip to shreds. This could have been amazing. Yeah, that's that's why Thunderbirds are so often used. But that was that. So Catastrophe is... Well, I mean, they lost that tournament. They lost that part of the tournament. I mean, they were already 7th place, so it's not a huge drop. And at this point, I'm not sure what's happening in terms of if there's a bracket, if there is, Sigaro, Fieldthos, Wesley Boss, and Google Frog are the ones that would be in that bracket. But I don't know what's happening now, because the whole the whole tournament organization was a little bit up in the air. Well, do we have any more games? I think now what we we're have, doing on, what's the format? The format at this point, I think, is going to be a single elimination bracket. Where I kind of double elimination bracket with a couple of them in the losers bracket to begin with. Okay. So it's. I don't have any clue how many games that is, but I'm I'm still okay. Be three, three or four more, if we go to that. But I don't know what Akuno is planning because I don't know how late it is for people. Oh no. Okay. So top four finals. All right. So we are gonna have a bracket. We're gonna be getting to that. Once that gets set up, that's gonna take a little while. So, until then, again, we have, well, we have a, it's a short break, so stay tuned. We'll have the single elimination bracket for the top four in a few minutes. To the loop. 